is another way to deal with money though. So we're talking about what value do I get back? That's one way to justify what we're spending. But another way mm -hmm. is what's it actually cost me to run this thing. If it's cheap enough, then, yeah. you know, the end value isn't quite as important. So yeah. when it comes yeah. to cloud repatriation, are you seeing cloud uh, applications come back out of the cloud because it was lift and shift. And so it's just very inefficient to run them in cloud versus mm -hmm. are they cloud native? And that mm -hmm. just actually didn't work out either. Can you contrast those two? Yeah, it's, it's honestly some of both, Ethan. So let me go back to the first part of that. So, so one, I, I gave up the notion years ago that the average executive knows how much an app costs in their own business. I was woefully inadequate on that one. If you go to the average executive, how much does this app cost today? You're going to get five different answers if they don't just outright say, I don't know. And so they're assuming if I put this in the cloud, it's got to be cheaper because they've been drinking the Kool-Aid, right? Two misconceptions people have. The well, cloud is going to be less secure and the cloud is going to be less expensive when in fact, often the cloud is more, more secure and more, more secure. expensive, right? Yeah. Hmm. And so they've got, a, they've got a bad notion of, of the cost baseline. And what they, what they often don't understand is that the, the cloud can be cheaper, but that doesn't mean it will be cheaper, right? It can be cheaper if you change your behavior. But if you're going to run something 24 seven, like you did in the data center, never turn it off, never scale it down, always, you yep. know, build for peak like Black Friday. If you're a retailer, your behavior has to change. If you just pour me more resources in the same old paradigm, you were doing like the lift and shift. And th they're kind of two different problems here. The people that do lift and shift, the, the easy thing for them to do would be to right size, right? And there are typically two opportunities to right size. There's the fact that there was a gap in your on-prem environment between utilization and allocation, right? I said that I needed a 16 core box with 48 gigs of memory and average, I'm using maybe half of that. But then the other opportunity people miss is that you were probably running on, you know, gen six or gen seven architecture in your data center. And now you're going to, you know, you were on a Pinto, now you're going to a Corvette. You, you don't need to have the same type of horsepower in the cloud. So you've actually wasted twice. But then here's the other part that gets interesting to me. When you get into the higher level services, those higher level services are really, really glamorous, but the average architect can't actually articulate the value they're getting for those other higher level services, right? We want to talk about PaaS and CAS and IaaS and all that kind of stuff. And I'll introduce a term that I shared recently. I think every provider, in my opinion, is actually pushing CAS, but it's not container as a service, it's confusion as a service. There's so much stuff out there. People really don't know what in the world to pick. And so they're just bombarded with all this information. And so they're winging it or they're going with what a buddy picked or what looks popular. I hear a lot of architects say that our architectural strategy is literally anything but IaaS. And that's not hmm. based on data. That's not based on value. That's based on essentially the type of Lego blocks they want to play with. And so it, and it's an assumption that if they go up the stack somewhat, that's going to be more efficient or better or more cloud native somehow. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that, is, that is the assumption that it is going to be better. And sometimes it is better in terms of the stuff that you want to work with. Does it deliver more value, though? And so yeah. the, the, other, the other part of that question, Ethan, that I'll, that I'll share is I think a lot of people got hurt during COVID because they realized that the elasticity they have at the top end of the cloud is not matched by the elasticity at the bottom end of the cloud. Because in theory, my, my, my bill should drop down as my usage drops down. But the fine print in a lot of those licensing and costing agreements actually had a hard floor set that didn't let me drop down as much as I wanted to. And so a lot hmm. of companies found that out the hard way. So to sum it up, lift and shift, we definitely see a lot of waste. When it comes to higher level services, again, people are just spinning up stuff and not knowing what they're doing. I I'll mention a particular customer use case. I can't say the name, but it's something that you could buy at Best Buy. I'll put it that way. This particular company was spinning up stuff in one of, the, one of the big three cloud providers. And they literally said, Bobby, we don't know if this one app is going to cost us 700K or $7 million. They were just spinning up stuff based on what the salesperson told them. And it was all proprietary stuff, vendor locking everywhere. They could not tell their CIO what this one application was going to cost. And they're just, they're just trying stuff and winging it. Mm -hmm. No more value delivered to the enterprise. They're just trying every skew that, that kind of caught their fancy. Thank you.